maybe? Oh, okay, some shout outs. Okay, good. Um, so I am Lisa Burkew. Um, I am a regulatory counsel in the Office of Generic Drug Policy, which is a sub-office of the Office of Generic Drugs within CEDAR. Today, I want to be providing an overview of drug device combination products um, and also what constitutes a complex drug device combination product under the Gadupa 2 commitment letter. I'm going to stand over here. It's a little awkward standing right there. So first, in doing so, I'm going to provide a, a general framework for ANDAs. I'll then go into what constitutes a, um, a combination product. And then I'll go into specific considerations as they relate to generic combination products. OK, so general framework for ANDAs. This applies to both just drug products submitted in an ANDA, but it also applies to combination products that are submitted under an ANDA. So approval of a generic drug starts with a listed drug, which is generally an innovator product or a brand name product approved under Federal 5C of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And ANDA relies on FDA's finding of safety and effectiveness for a listed drug. So you don't have to be supplying your own findings of safety and effectiveness. An ANDA applicant also has to demonstrate sameness of a number of characteristics to show that their proposed generic product is the same as the reference listed drug. OK, so the contents of an ANDA. You have to identify a single RLD and show that your proposed generic product um, has the same conditions of use, same active ingredient, same route of administration, dosage form, strength, and labeling as the reference listed drug. That labeling requirement is subject to a couple of exceptions, and I'll be going into that on the next slide. Uh, you also have to show that your proposed generic product is bioequivalent to the reference listed drug. You have to provide information on safety of inactive ingredients, patent certifications and exclusivity information, and also chemistry, manufacturing, and controls information, also known as quality information. So the same labeling requirement. Uh, a generic drug product labeling, and also a generic combination product labeling, has to be the same as the RLD. But there are some exceptions. Um, one is if there are changes required because of differences approved pursuant to a suitability petition. Another is if there's differences in the generic labeling because the generic and RLD are produced or distributed by different manufacturers. And then finally, differences are permitted if there's omissions in the labeling because of an indication or another aspect of that labeling um, is protected by patent or exclusivity. ANDAs are held to the same high standards of CGMPs as new drug applications. So for some regulatory citations to look towards, you can go to 21 CFR 210 slash 211, which is for drug products. Um, and then you can also go to 21 CFR Part 4, which clarifies which CGMPs apply to combination products. OK, therapeutic equivalents. Um, in relation to the RLD, generic products are expected to be both pharmaceutically equivalent and bioequivalent to the RLD. And if you are pharmaceutically equivalent and bioequivalent and can be expected to have the same clinical effect and safety profile, when administered to patients under the conditions specified in the labeling as the RLD, then you're presumed to be therapeutically equivalent um, and substitutable at the pharmacy level. And that's when you will also get a, a TE code in the orange book. OK, so what is a combo product? 21 CFR 3.2 contains our regulatory definition of a combination product. Um, so you can be a, a single entity combination product. So this is a combo, a product comprised of two or more regulated components. So traditionally in ANDA, what we have seen is a drug constituent and a device constituent that are physically, chemically, or otherwise combined and produced as a single entity. So an example of this would be a pre-filled syringe. You can also be co-packaged uh, combination product. And this is when you have two or more separate products that are packaged together. So for example, a drug constituent and a device constituent that are packaged together in a single package or as a unit. Um, and an example of this would be something like a surgical kit. And then finally, there are cross-labeled combination products. And I think these might be a little less known, um, but what it is is you have a drug, device, or a biological product that are packaged separately, but according to its investigational plan or proposed labeling, is intended for use only with another approved individually spe spe uh, specified constituent part, a different constituent part. 
So when you have a combination product, that combination product is going to be assigned to a specific center for its pre-market review and regulation. Um, and that assignment is based on a determination of what is the primary mode of action of that, of that product. Uh, and that is defined by the single mode of action expected to make the greatest contribution to the overall therapeutic effects. So for example, if you have a combo product um, and that drug constituent um, is expected to make the greatest contribution to the overall intended therapeutic effects, then it's a drug-led combination product and its review will be assigned to CEDAR. Applicants can submit a request for designation to obtain a binding classification as to whether something is or is not a combo product, an assignment to a center, or you can submit a pre-RFP, which is like a more informal mechanism for gaining that type of feedback. Uh, FDA's uh, website, we have a couple of guidances on how to submit a RFD or a pre-RFD. Um, and I'll also note that even though uh, you have, let's say, a drug-led combo product that is assigned to CEDAR, that doesn't mean that CEDAR just works in a silo and we ignore the other centers. Um, we consult with other centers, such as CDRH, um, for topics that have been traditionally within their expertise, and we'll use the inter-center consult process in order to gain that feedback. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about some considerations specific to generic combination products. Um, so we previously discussed the assessment of differences between a proposed generic combo product and its RLD in a couple of citizen petitions. One is our response to King Pharmaceuticals, um, and this had to do with auto injectors. And the other was our response to Day Pharma, and this had to do with emergency use auto injectors. And note that both of these are from 2009 and 2010, respectively. In those citizen petition responses, we discuss generally the device constituent physical characteristics, device constituent performance, product labeled instructions for use, and therapeutic equivalents for generic auto injector products. Those baseline principles that we conveyed within those citizen petition responses, combined with the past 10 or so years of experience, have really led to where we are today. And so considerations include, um, but note that are not limited to portion, our performance characteristics, which is where we take into consideration the performance of the device constituent and its impact on the delivery of the drug constituent, and then also the user interface. And when we say the user interface, we mean anything that the user interacts with for that product. And so I strongly encourage folks to look at the draft guidance for industry, which I put up right here comparative analysis and related comparative use human factor studies for a drug device combination product submitted in an ANDA. It's a, it's a mouthful of a title, but it's a really important guidance in that it provides our recommendations for uh, how to identify and uh, assess differences in design between a proposed generic combination product and its RLD. I'm not going to go into all of the specific recommendations in that guidance because my fellow panelists are going to be going into some of those and applying it to specific products, which I think will be really helpful for you. But I am going to go into some high-level principles that that guidance conveyed that I think are also really important. Um, so first, applicants should generally seek approval of a presentation approved for the RLD. So if the RLD is an auto-injector, we would generally expect that the generic would be an auto-injector, for example. Um, however, we don't expect the design of the user interface for that generic combo product to be identical to the RLD in all respects. And we'll accept um, design differences if they are adequately analyzed, scientifically justified, and don't otherwise preclude approval in an ANDA. The comparative analysis within that guidance that I cited on the previous slide and that we're going to be discussing throughout um, the next two hours or so, that can assist applicants in identifying differences in the user interface and in determining whether additional data, such as data from a comparative use human factor study, should be submitted in the application. Certain labeling differences, so these are those labeling differences I was talking about at the beginning of the presentation, that flow from permissible differences in design may be permissible, and we'll evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis. We also intend to consider whether an end user can use that generic combo product when it's substituted for the RLD without the intervention of a healthcare provider and without additional training prior to use of the combo product. And then we also really encourage folks to engage early in the control in, um, via controlled correspondence and in the pre-ANDA program. Um, and, and the differences between whether you're going to use a control or a pre-ANDA really depends on the types of questions that you're asking and the type of engagement that you're hoping to have with FDA. Okay, so now I'll talk to you for just a moment about what is considered a complex combo product. 
So obviously you have the whole world of drug device combination products that might be submitted in an ANDA. And a subset of those are what is considered complex combination products. And these were initially outlined in our GDUFA 2 commitment letter, which accompanied GDUFA 2 uh, legislation, which was reauthorized uh, about two years ago in August 2017. So if you look at the GDUFA 2 commitment letter, which um, is on our website, the second line in the definition of a complex product includes language on complex drug device combination products. So it says that complex drug device combination products are considered complex products for purposes of the pre and the program. And in the GDUFA 2 commitment letter, it provides two examples, auto injectors and meter dose inhalers as examples of complex combination products. Um, our experience in, in the past couple of years has also shown that in addition to auto injectors and MDIs, soft mist inhalers, metered nasal spray products, and dry powdered inhalers are other examples of complex drug device combination products that may be submitted in an ANDA. So now I will turn it to um, the next presenter.